Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, we've come this weekend up into the Lake District um, and I've come to a place that's recommended to me by one of the watchers of the YouTube channel, a, a lady called Sheila. So thank you very much, Sheila. And we've come to a place where hopefully we're going to get to see some red squirrels. Now, I've heard lots of information about this location and red squirrels are really quite common here um, and almost guaranteed to be able to be seen. So come along for the journey and see what we see. Oh, one's just run across the path in front of me. Yes. I love red squirrels. I just think there's nothing more British than the red squirrel. Immortalised by Beatrix Potter with Squirrel Nutkin. They're just such a fantastic little species to photograph. And I'm really looking forward now to capturing some images of them for you. So no sooner have we arrived and there is literally red squirrels everywhere. Um, now there it is a feeding site, so there are rangers that come up and they put out food specifically for the red squirrels. And these, obviously it's a place that, that photographers must come to all the time. And as a result of that, people have set up perches um, and opportunities to get some really nice photographs. So just to the side of me on, on, um, on one of the walls, somebody's put a branch that's laid down, it's covered in beautiful moss and lichen, um, and then the, the rangers have put food out there just around that, so hopefully it'll come onto the log and we can get some nice video and some nice photographs of it on the log. What I really want to try and achieve is here they jump across the river. So once I've got a little bit of footage of them um, a little bit close, I'm going to reposition myself and then hopefully get down to the water's edge and then, and then try and get some shots as they're leaping from one rock to another as they cross over the river. So I've just moved up the path a little bit um, and there's a tree stump, like an old tree stump that's just next to the river um, and there is a few monkey nuts in the tree stump um, and some sunflower seeds and they're coming down into that but I don't know whether you can see just over my shoulder, just about here there's a robin that is no more of the back. There was a robin and he's just sat right over my shoulder. Uh, I could reach my hand out and touch it. In fact, I'm fairly confident if I put some seed on it, it'd probably feed from my hand. It is that close. It's a beautiful place, this. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's right next to me. See that, it landed right next to me. Um, and it's, it's totally alive with, with wildlife, you know, if it's not all the little woodland birds that you would, you would expect to get, it's the red squirrels running around. Um, and I've just been speaking to a lady that's here that I actually met in Yarrow Valley called Denise, uh, and she's just been explaining that they get dipper on the, on the stream here, this kingfisher, you know, there's, oh, <laughs> the red squirrel is currently running across. I'm running right up to the stump just as I want it to. And so I'm getting some wonderful shots. Uh, and some wonderful footage. What the red squirrel are tending to do, there's another one coming in just now, so I'll just get away with that. What the red squirrel tend to do, although this one 
just to prove me wrong has done the exact opposite, is they come in, they grab, if they put some hazelnuts out now, the hazelnut is the prized possession of a red squirrel. They absolutely love them because of course they can cash them for a later date. Um, so they tend to come in, grab it and then run off with it and cash it somewhere and then return. Um, but occasionally they'll sit just as this one's doing right now and I'm just going to get some video of that thing. Um, they'll sit and they'll just happily munch away. Um, and this one's probably no more than I would say five metres from my feet and there's this second one running in now which will hopefully give us a little bit of an interaction. One in and one out. <laughs> um, and you, you get some really nice photographs and it's just non-stop. It's a place I'm definitely going to be coming back to. Denise has just been saying she came when it snowed and it was fantastic. The snow was incredibly deep and you got some great shots. Oh, there's one on the rock now. I'm just going to have to move that over. There he is. He's on the rock. He's coming over. They're having a scrap. Um, and the snow is... Oh, they're all around me. They're literally all around me now. I'm going to put this camera down and get some photographs. That one... Oh, my word. Let me just turn the camera around. He's literally the other side of this rock. There he goes. He's running off back over that way. It's non-stop, so I'm going to crack on. So I've just switched positions and um, you can probably just see the pavilion behind me um, and there's a number of photographers that are in the pavilion shooting out of it so that if it's a bit drizzly you know you can stay dry you don't even have to be out in the in the wet weather which is just fantastic isn't it the reason I've switched position I've now got my feet in the stream um, and what I'm hoping to achieve is what I noticed when the, the squirrels were coming to this stump on my left hand side they were actually darting across the stream in front of me and what I want to try and achieve here is to get a photograph of uh, the squirrels leaping from one rock to the other as, as they move across. Now, obviously, what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to increase my shutter speed significantly to freeze that motion. Um, and red squirrels do move much quicker than I think people give them credit for. I think, personally, they're much faster than the grey squirrel. Um, so my sh shutter speeds, I'm going to start off at 1,000. Um, and I'm shooting wide open at f2.8 and my ISO sitting at around the 4000 mark. So I will increase my shutter speed if I just have a little look now. If I, if I increased it to 2000, I'm gonna increase my, my ISO to 8000. So we are really kind of pushing the limits and they're my personal limits, they're not the camera's limits of where I like the ISO to sit. I, I, anything above 10,000 for me, um, I think even using uh, Topaz renders your images a little bit soft. And that was very much the case where, with an image that I entered into my lo local club co uh, competition just recently. It was of a barn owl and I'd run it through Topaz and actually uh, Topaz had taken out some of the feather detail and, and the judge said, oh, it was out of focus. It wasn't out of focus. It was just soft because of the, the um, noise reduction software that I'd applied. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just sit nice and quiet I'm going to let the red squirrels come across and hopefully I'm going to catch one as it jumps across the, uh, across the stream. What I absolutely love about the wildlife photography community, and particularly since I've started the channel and, you know, people are, um, are watching the videos and then coming and chatting to me, is how helpful and welcoming people are when I visit places that are not, not my places, you know, they're, they're not in my backyard, they're in these people's backyard and they go out of the way to help you and give you tips of, of how to get the best out of the location. So when I arrived here, um, there was a guy called Mike King um, and he's, he's local, he lives just in Carlisle 
and he spent ages talking to me about different locations and different subjects. He's seen where I've been photographing and then offered to bait up purchase for me. And I just love that. I love that people go out of the way to support one another and help one another. And I think that's one of the great things about the wildlife photography community. In the main, not everybody's like that, but in the main, you know, everybody's so welcoming and so happy to come and have a conversation with you and share their experience and share their expertise to get you the best opportunities. Um, it really is fantastic. So we've changed locations yet again, uh, and I hope you can hear me over the volume of the stream at the side of me. And what I've seen when I was stood having a quick chat with um, Mike and Denise was I've seen the, the main path that they seem to be leaping over the river. And there's quite a big gap with a sizable amount of water passing under it between two large rocks. Um, and that's the, that's the point where you can see them leaping through the air. So what I've done is I've positioned myself a little bit downstream, giving them a little bit of room to manoeuvre just ahead of me, and then I'm waiting for them to jump between those two rocks. Now, I've increased my shutter speed now to two thousandth of a second. The first jump that I, I got at a thousandth of a second, I think it was just a little bit too slow. So I'm back up to two thousandth of a second. But actually, this area here is a bit brighter than where I was uh, before. There's very little in the way of canopy over the top of me and the sky is brightening up a little bit. So at 2.8, my ISO is down to 2,200, which is a, a completely usable ISO range. So all it's a case of now is focusing on this gap. And the hardest bit in that is just to my right here is the log that has got about five red squirrels on it. And I'm just resisting the temptation because you can guarantee the minute I turn my camera around to photograph those uh, red squirrels on the log at the side of me, we'll get one jumping over the rocks in front of me. So I'm just gonna sit tight, be patient, and hopefully they'll come to me. So I've shifted position yet again. Um, and what I've tried to do now is get as low to the water as I possibly can. Uh, you'll also notice that I've ditched the tripod. Um, and my reasoning for ditching the tripod is, in all honesty, I was losing shots because of the tripod. Um, trying to get the tripod stable on this very uneven ground and then being limited by its panning movement meant, meant that if the, unless the, the squirrels were going for the exact jump that I'd planned for, um, I was having to quickly take it off and shift to a different location. So I'm just, I'm just hand-holding the, the camera now, um, and I think that that will probably increase my chances of being able to get the shot. Um, and it's just a waiting game. What, what they appear to do is they seem to come in waves. So you'll get periods of time where there's very little in the way of uh, red squirrels around, and then, boom, it comes alive, and you'll get five or six all running around at once. I've said about them being very almost tame like and not being phased by people and uh, Denise and Mike's bags under the pavilion and they've got hazelnuts in the bag and I've got some video which I'll pop up on the screen now for you and the squirrels are in the bag looking for the hazelnuts they're not phased by people at all and the other thing I've noticed a lot here is that the quality of the red squirrels and by that I mean their, their health I mean they look in absolute pristine condition it's been, you know, a, a really quite hard winter for them. It's been very, very wet. We've had storm after storm. We've had a, a, a spell of a lot of snow here as well, which again will have been difficult, yet the squirrels here are in absolute pristine condition. There's just one coming to my right now. Absolute pristine condition. Um, fur is looking fantastic. They're, 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 you know, their uh, skin around their eyes and things like that. Places that they do tend to pick up infections no no presence of that on any of these specimens at all they're absolutely top notch and i think that's down to the hard work of the rangers um, you know there is rangers that come here every day they put the feed out there's feed boxes out all over the place there's information uh, information leaflets are about which i'll pop up on the screen so you can see and um you know that their hard work is what's paying dividends in making this a really good stronghold for the red squirrel
Well, I got up this morning with all the intentions of going and trying photographing otters um, near Kendall, but the light was just perfect this morning. Absolutely perfect light, golden light. And so I thought, oh, I'm going back because actually I didn't get all the photographs I wanted to get yesterday. And I certainly didn't get a jumping shot, which I was aiming to get. So I'm coming back and making the most of this golden light and hopefully getting some fantastic images for my hard work. So come along for the journey and see what I see. So I'm back down on the river. Um, and the idea being is I'm at this very, very popular thoroughfare for the red squirrels across the river. Um, some people have put some hazelnuts on one of the rocks, which is kind of encouraging them to jump across the river. And I've just got myself in a position where I'm nice and comfortable. Um, and then using that with the camera on the tripod in a nice stable position to be able to capture the, the red squirrels as they jump across. Now they move incredibly fast, much faster than I think people give them credit for. There is one on its way now, so I'll probably go quiet. And when I looked at the images <coughs> that I took yesterday, a thousandth of a second was nowhere near fast enough to, to freeze the motion. And so the, the squirrels were slightly blurred. So actually I've gone for, for, gone for a much faster shutter speed today and I'm shooting at 3,200th of a second. I'm shooting wide open at f2.8. Um, and that's given me a, an ISO of around 5,000, which is okay. Um, I will have to use some um, denoise software to, to make those images a little bit cleaner. Uh, but as long as I'm not cropping into the image, I'll be absolutely fine. And actually 400 mil, uh, 400 mil at this range is exactly the kind of crop that I'd be looking for. So I don't need to worry about cropping into the images. And it's only when you crop into the images does um, the noise really become apparent. Um, so hopefully this will be ideal. Now, they, they go in two ways across these rocks. Um, they'll either go directly kind of parallel across the river, not parallel, but a, a 90 degree angle, which is great because I'll be able to get them jumping off and you get a nice side angle but there's also a second route that they take where they're going to be almost jumping towards the camera and that's the one I'm looking for um, that's the one I'm looking for and um, that should give me quite a nice picture so that one jumped from left to right and it was the parallel version um, but it's jumping away from you when it's coming from left to right. And again, that's not an ideal shot, really, realistically. You want to see them moving towards the camera. So right to left is where I'm really looking for them. But in all honesty, I'll take them coming from both sides. Another one coming here. Here we go. I'm actually thinking that I'm probably just a little bit too close. Um, as it came down over the rocks then, I, I was struggling to... Here we go, there's another one here. Much easier when they're going from left to right, but it's just not the shot I'm looking for. Um, it's much more problematic when they're coming right to left. And the reason for that is that um, the background that they're travelling over is quite busy, so the autofocus sometimes is, is struggling to pick out the squirrel. Um, you really need to be tracking and locked onto it as it's moving in. So just like yesterday, they seem to have waves of being really, really active and then there's a lull and it goes quiet. And then waves of being really active and lull and then there's a quiet. A um, couple of things that I just want to mention that I've, I've considered when I've been taking this shot today. Um, the light is coming upstream, so the light source is at the bottom of the valley here and it's coming upstream. So the, the kind of the, the obvious choice is to sit downstream of where they're going to be jumping um, and, and get them illuminated completely 
um, by, by the light source. But what I want, and what I think is really, really nice with the red, red squirrels, is if you can backlight them, you get that lovely rim light around the, uh, around the fur, and it really shows off the tail, and it really shows off the tufts on their ears. And um, so I've purposely come upstream and I'm shooting back down towards the light source. And that's probably um, counterintuitive to what a lot of people have been, will be photographing. A number of photographers that are here this morning have gone downstream and are photographing up. Um, and I might choose to do that later on in the session. I might move to a lower point and try to photograph up. The only problem is when you're photographing upstream, obviously by the very nature, the elevation is, is climbing. And so you tend to get a busy background. Whereas when you're shooting downstream, the, the distance between the background and, and your subject is enough for it to be able to be completely diffused and unobstructive. Uh, so just some things to consider when you're thinking about your positioning for your subject and where your light is. So I've just had a, a wander up from the main feeding area. There's a waterfall further up the river that's definitely worth having a look at. Um, and I think what's incredible is it doesn't matter where you go, there are red squirrels and opportunities for photographs absolutely everywhere. As I'm walking along this path, they're constantly crossing the path in front of you, um, bobbing into the feeders that are all up in the trees all around us. Um, there's so many of them here, it's just a really, really good opportunity to get close to a subject that you often don't get the opportunity to photograph. Um, and because they are so used to people, you really don't need a big lens like this. You know, if you're just getting started in wildlife photography and you've got yourself um, a, a lens that's perhaps limited, let's say you, you, you've got a, up to a 200mm lens, absolutely ideal for somewhere like here. You do not need a big telephoto lens. In fact, when I come next time, I think I'll probably leave my telephoto lens at home and I'm going to bring a wide angle lens not brought one on this trip, but I really think that would lend itself to some really nice um, animal in its habitat shots, um, shooting as, you know, as wide as possible and, and capturing as much of the, the, uh, the landscape with the subject as well. Um, and I probably do that using a little bit of remote photography. So just get my, um, my trigger, put my camera on a little tripod, set it up and then wait for the, the squirrels to come in and you'll be able to get shots absolutely no problem at all. You don't need a big telephoto lens. So there you have it. Probably the finest red squirrel reserve I have ever been to in England. Um, a real stronghold for them. There have been times when the red squirrel has been crawling over my feet. They've been that close. And what a fantastic location to photograph them in. You've got the river that's flowing through the valley, lots of big boulders in that river, and the red squirrel will hop from boulder to boulder. You've got the woodland and the trees that you can photograph the red squirrels up in. And then you've got this lovely leaf filled ground that you can often get the red squirrels foraging around in and get something a little bit different. I've just been chatting with the warden who pops up every weekend uh, to fill up all the feeders and check on them. Uh, and they do a fantastic job covering all of uh, the Lake District in lots of different zones. His zone is the Penrith area. Um, and their, their job is to just maintain the habitat for them, keep the feed there for them, check that there's no greys in the area. Obviously, if there is grey squirrels in the area, they do have to, uh, they have to deal with those and remove them from them because obviously the grey squirrels, they don't um, outcompete the reds for food, but what they do uh, carry is a squirrel pox. And it doesn't seem to affect the grey squirrels, but it's deadly for the red squirrels. So they do have to maintain the population of greys in the area and make sure there is no graze. You can probably see, I've got a little guest behind me here, a red squirrel happily feeding on a stone, okay, with a, with a water pool behind him. And I think that just sums it up. It's just fabulous. And I think there's so many people that come here, the red squirrels are not phased by people at all. You don't need to be in a hide. You can just set yourself up on the floor, 
put a little bit of monkey nuts out and the red squirrels will come. And then it's up to you then to be as creative as you want to, to get those shots. Perch, some nice perch shots, jumping shots as they're going from rock to rock. Really the world's your oyster. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, it's been a fantastic weekend up in the Lake District. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like. If you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. We're at 4,000 subscribers now and it's continuing to grow. And it's fantastic when I'm out and about bumping into people who are viewers of the channel who come and have a conversation with me and have a chat. It's always a pleasure to speak to people who are viewers of the channel. We've got a Buy Me A Coffee webpage. I'll put a description at the bottom, a link to the, uh, the webpage at the bottom. If you feel like you want to show a little bit more appreciation, feel free to bob on there and buy me a coffee. And um, There'll be a, a link in the description to the video as well if you miss that link at the bottom. And until next time, from me and the Red Squirrels, ta -ra.